every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. Randall wants to see you. What? Yeah, no fooling. I was out riding past her ranch and her cousin Gladys came out to tell me. Why should she want to see me? I don't know. She used to know your mother, didn't she? Sure, but gee, she hasn't been out of that house or seen anyone but Gladys for the past 12 years. Gladys said it was urgent. Can I go with you, Annie? You know how Mrs. Randall feels about men. Well, he's not a man, he's just a boy. Well, I'm gonna be a man. <laughs> well, that'd be enough for her. If I'm not back before lunch, there's ham in the icebox. What's Mrs. Randall got against men? Well, that's rather a long story, Tag. First of all, her husband ran off and left her, and then her daughter eloped with a man she didn't approve of. That wasn't my fault. Oh, now you're being logical. You ought to know by now you can't be logical about women. Gladys. Oh, it's you, Annie. Uh, Lofty said Mrs. Randall wanted to see me. Yes. Come in. Frances is uh, in her room. We, uh, we live mostly in the kitchen and the bedrooms now. What's this all about? She'll tell you. I don't want to be accused of interfering. Annie's here to see you. Gladys, isn't this your day to go to market? I've already hitched up the buggy. Well, don't let us detain you. Come here, my dear. I want to look at you closely. Have you been ill, Mrs. Randall? I've been like this for months. You're a very pretty girl. I hope you're not making a fool of yourself over some male. <laughs> no, not yet. Good. I... I want you to do something for me, Annie. I'd be glad to. Twelve years ago, when my daughter Mary eloped with that English carnival man, I shut myself up in this house and pretended she was dead. I don't have to pretend anymore. She died two months ago. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Randall. I had a letter from Mary's daughter telling me about it. Mary's daughter? Yes. I've been a grandmother all these years and didn't even know it. She named the child Francis after me. Where's the child now? She'll arrive by tomorrow's stage. I've been out of touch with things for so long, Annie. I'll need help. I'll be glad to do anything I can, Mrs. Randall. And I'm sure that Gladys will be able to help. Oh, she hates the child. Why should she hate a child she's never seen? Because I'm rich, and she expected to inherit every penny of it. Now I have a granddaughter. What is it you want me to do? Will you meet the stage tomorrow and bring Frances here? Oh, of course. Thank you, Annie. This means a great deal to me. It's almost as if the Lord was giving me another chance. I told you not to come here. Oh, please, Al, I must talk to you. I'm sorry, darling. It's just that as long as the old lady's alive, we can't take these chances. I know. Al. Hmm? When you asked me to marry you, was it because you loved me, or was it because you knew I'd inherit money? Well, it's because I love you, of course. Why, what's the trouble? Frances's death isn't going to solve anything. Why not? She has a granddaughter. What? 
After all these years, it seems that I'm not the nearest of kin. The child inherits everything. Where is this granddaughter now? She gets in tomorrow. Al, I don't know what to say. Suppose the child doesn't arrive. What do you mean? Suppose there's an accident or something. Al, we couldn't do a thing like that. Don't look so shocked after all. You're more than willing to help Cousin Francis on her way, aren't you? Francis is a hateful old woman who'd be better off dead, but, but an innocent child, how can you even think of such a thing? I'm thinking of you. All I want is to marry you and get away from this dreadful place. I don't care about the money. Gladys, we can't live on love. Francis keeps over $2,000 in her rooms. I'll take that if you want. I'll think about it. I'm sorry things have turned out so badly. So am I. You better run along now. I have another appointment. Are you angry with me? No. No, you just have to get out of here and let me go back to work. We'll talk about this later. Tulsa. I've got a job. It's going to take two of you to do it. Hold your fire. Don't shoot. I'm not packing a gun. You keep him covered anyway. All right, everybody out of there. Come on, with your hands up. All right, you heard me. Come on, get off the floor and get down there. Come on, climb down. Yes, sir. Where are the rest of the passengers? The, there aren't any others. Ain't you supposed to be carrying a gal this trip? Not that I know of. The boss must have gotten the signals crossed. That's great. Let's make it look like a real holdup. Throw down that stung box. Come on, move. A holdup. You stay here, Ted. The Oakley girl. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, do you always get advance notice when there's going to be a holdup? I just rode out to meet one of your passengers. Well, the only one I'm carrying is a 10-year-old kid. That's the one. Don't be frightened, Francis. The shooting's all over. I wasn't frightened. What's the matter? I'm sorry. I, I was expecting somebody else. You knew my name. Your name? You called me Francis, didn't you? You're Francis? Francis Kruger. I'm on the way to my grandmother's. Holy Toledo. I beg your pardon. Well, I thought that... Well, I mean, your grandmother thought... Look, I'm Annie Oakley, a friend of your grandmother's. How do you do, Miss Oakley? I've done a lot better. Look, Francis, your grandmother... You sure surprised those guys, Annie. <laughs> and I've got a surprise for you. Tag, this is Francis Kruger. How do you do? Huh? You must excuse us, Francis. There was a little mix-up on your name. Oh, we thought you were going to be a girl. A girl? We'll explain it to you on the way to your grandmother's. You and Tag can ride double on Pixie. Wait a minute, Annie. I wouldn't be caught dead with anybody in a dude outfit like that. Now, you listen to me, Tag Oakley. It's going to be bad enough when Mrs. Randall finds out he's a boy without your complicating things. Suppose somebody sees me. You will survive. Now, go on. I want to talk to Jim. All right. 
get on. I I'm afraid I don't know how. What? I've never been on a horse. This is even worse than I thought. Come in. Well, where is she? Wasn't she on the stage? Francis will be here in a minute, Mrs. Randall. I, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. Why? Is anything wrong with the child? Oh, no, not as far as I'm concerned. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I just mean that you have certain prejudices that... Just what are you trying to say? Francis isn't a girl, Mrs. Randall. He's a boy. A boy? Oh, I'm sure if you'll give yourself a chance... Send him away. Send him away? That's right. But you can't do that. He's your grandson. But I'm not going to have what's left of my life ruined by another selfish, ungrateful male. Oh, he's only a boy. So was my husband, only a boy once. And that other creature who stole my daughter away. I don't want to see him. Tell him to go away. I don't want to see him. You'll have to tell him yourself. What? You told me yesterday, Mrs. Randall, that the Lord was giving you another chance. Well, if you're going to turn him down, you'll have to do it yourself. Come back here. Don't you dare. All right, Francis. Francis, this is your grandmother. How do you do? Oh. I'm sorry you've been ill. Why didn't you tell me you were a boy? I thought you knew. In my letters, I spelled my name with an I, not with an E. Oh. Does it make so much difference? It makes a great deal of difference. I'm sorry. You don't look a thing like your mother. You look like your father. Thank you. No, I didn't mean that as a compliment. But it is. Father was a wonderful man. Oh. Francis, your grandmother has something to tell you. Haven't you, Mrs. Randall? Why... Yes, I... Don't be I, embarrassed. Do, you don't want me, do you? You wouldn't be happy here living with two old women. It isn't right. You're my grandmother. I'll make arrangements to send you to some boarding school. You'd like that, wouldn't you? If, if that's what you want. I'll pay all your expenses and give you an allowance and all that. Thank you very much. Don't thank me. And now I'm just a little tired if you don't mind of course come on francis we'll see your grandmother later goodbye grandmother it's been nice meeting you goodbye she she didn't like me did she she will just give her a little time How'd she take it? About the way I expected. Tag, why don't you take Francis outside and show him some of your rope tricks? Well, I know what I'd like to show him. Tag. Oh, all right. Come on, Francis. I guess Tag told you about the holdup. Yes, it must have been dreadful. Well, it might have been a lot worse. Jim said they were looking for a little girl. Little girl? Yes. Did you tell anyone in town that Mrs. Randall's granddaughter was arriving on the stage? I know, I do. Oh, no. What's the matter? Nothing. I, I just felt a little faint, that's all. I hope that's all. And I also hope that Francis doesn't have any more narrow escapes. I've got to run into town to see Lofty. Stay here and keep an eye on Francis. Does he need a nursemaid? Just do as I say. Oh, all right, Annie. So long, Francis. See you this afternoon. Goodbye, Miss Oakley. Annie, you must be off your rocker. Miss Gladys, well, she just isn't the type. Well, who else do you think would benefit if anything happened to the boy? Can you honestly picture Miss Gladys hiring thugs to kill anybody? No, I can't. But you should have seen her face when I told her about it. She's mixed up in this some way. Mm, I don't believe it. No, she may be a frustrated, unhappy old maid, but, oh, she's as harmless hey, as... Wait a minute. Look across the street. She sure didn't waste any time getting into town. Why would she be going to see Al Proctor? 
The only reason a boy is alive is because your men were looking for a girl. My men? Gladys, I don't know anything about this. Except for Annie, nobody else knew Francis was on the stage. That doesn't prove anything. I think it does. Look at me. Do you really believe I'd lie to you? I think you've lied all along. About loving me, about the money not being important, about everything. All right, maybe I did lie about the holdup, but that's the only time I've ever lied to you. You've got to believe that. So you did try to kill Francis. Gladys, you spent half your life slaving for that old lady. I couldn't stand by and watch the child cheat you out of things that are rightfully yours. I see. I only did it because I love you. That's the truth. You're very clever, aren't you? You knew I didn't care two pins about the money. You were all I ever wanted. Where are you going? To the sheriff. No. You're going to stay right here. Are you out of your mind? Stu, toss it. Someday, when you're a wealthy woman, you're going to thank me for this. What are you going to do? What do you want, boss? I want you to take her in the other room and tie her up. What are you going to do? Little Francis is going to have an accident. You'll hang for murder. If there's any talk of murder, you're the one to hang. You have the motive, the most to gain. Besides, I have those letters, the ones you wrote about doing in the old lady. I never meant that. That's not the way the letters read. I must have been out of my mind. I was blinded by my love for you and you... Take her off. How do you know she won't go to the sheriff? Afterwards, I mean. It's simple. Once we get rid of the boy, she'll do what I say. You sure? She keeps her mouth shut, but she gets half the old lady's money. If she gives us any trouble, I'll see that she hangs. Let's get out of here. There's Proctor. They're heading somewhere in a mighty big hurry. Stay here and keep an eye on the office. I'm going over there. Howard, if you need help. Howdy, Stu. Proctor's not here. I'm looking for Miss Randall. Well, I ain't seen her. Oh, that's funny. Buggy's outside. Could have sworn I saw her come in here. Well, maybe she just passed through here to go out the back way. Yeah, maybe she did. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Maybe we better find out. Oh, no, you don't. ride a horse and I'll teach you to wrestle. You'll teach me? I didn't mean to sound like that, but well, my father was a wonderful athlete and he taught me a lot of things. Such as what? It's a little hard to explain. I'd have to demonstrate. Look, suppose you try to throw me. You trying to be funny? No, quite serious. Come ahead. All right, remember, you asked for it. Must have slipped. Let's try it again. Oh. Say, you're pretty good. Well, what's surprising about that? He's my grandson. He ought to be good. Did you really mean that? Of course I meant it. Now go on, both of you. I want to enjoy the view, and I don't want it cluttered up with boys. Do you have another horse in the barn, Mrs. Randall? There's old Nellie. Why? I promised him I'd teach him to ride. Come on, I'll race you to the barn. We need 
a saddle. Hey, that must be the tack room here. Boss, the kid's right in there. Look. Yeah, he's all by himself. You and I are going to be good friends, aren't we, Nelly? Don't make a sound, son. I'm warning you. Wh who are you? Never mind. Just do what I say. It'll do. Mr. Proctor, what are you... Shut up, Tay. Get in there inside that horse. Yes, Mr. Proctor. Uh... Hurry up. Looks like we're going to have a double accident. Where do we take them? Up to the old mine. Kids can get killed playing with dynamite. Where's Francis? Out in the barn. Why? Put your hands up. Penny, I'm sorry. It's all right, Tag. Nobody's gonna get hers. You seem mighty sure of yourself. Get a gun. It's no use, Proctor. Gladys talked, and there's probably a posse on their way here right now. You're lying. If I'm lying, then how did I know about Gladys? Boss, what can we do? Well, if you've got any sense at all, you'll put those guns down and give yourselves up. I don't give up that easily. Keep her covered. Where are you going? We're gonna make a run for it. We'll need that cash the old lady keeps in the house. Tag while I go after Fox. Proctor, let's go back and meet that posse. Come on. And that's the whole story. I'm so ashamed. I don't know how I could have believed him, even listened to him. You're not to blame, Gladys. I've been a stubborn old fool. You had every reason to hate me. You mean, you mean you're not going to have me arrested? What for? You helped save the boy's life. Besides, I couldn't get along without you. May we come in? We have something we'd like to show you. Do you like it? Well, you're a regular cowpoke. You look fine, boy. There's only one thing wrong. I don't think you'll be able to wear this in a boarding school. He's not going to any boarding school. Uh, I'm not? You're staying right here with your old granny if you want to. Oh, granny! I'd say this is a real happy ending. Good night, folks.